Hi, and welcome to this introduction to art therapy here at Minds Journal. My name is Claire. I am an art therapist and mindset coach based in Belfast, Northern Ireland, and I help women who are struggling with feelings of anxiety, depression, overwhelm, complex PTSD, and trauma recovery, to name just a few. And if you've been struggling with any of these things, you might want to consider a virtual art therapy session. And I promise there are zero artistic skills required. And the reason is, it's not about the destination. It's not about creating a beautiful piece of artwork. It is about the journey you take to get there and creating as you explore how you are feeling. Art therapy is an amazing way to work on complex mental health issues if you have struggled to verbalize what you have experienced or even what you're feeling and how you're feeling. Even if you haven't figured out how you're feeling, it's a wonderful way to explore that. And if you watch this video and decide that you would be interested in learning more, I would be thrilled to connect with you on a 15 minute triage call. I wouldn't be pitching anything. It wouldn't be the art therapy session. It would just be a way of us connecting and figuring out if and how I can help you. And if you're interested, please visit clairedb.com forward slash art to book that call. And I do, I look forward to connecting with you because I do believe I can help. So the goal of art therapy is to help you explore self-expression using various creative methods like drawing or painting. And then we evaluate that work together for get, really to help you gain personal insight into what you have just experienced in, in the art creation process. And it really can lead to you developing much healthier and stronger coping skills. There are many techniques that can be employed, not just drawing or painting. You can doodle, you can collage, you can color, you can even practice handwriting if you want to. It all really depends on what you want to work on, how you want to feel, the supplies that you've got close to hand, what you're prepared to explore, things like that. And if you do end up booking that triage call with me, I can explain a bit more about the process in detail and what you can expect if we work together. But I want to repeat, zero skills are required. When you are working with your hands in a focused manner like that, your brain enters something called the alpha brainwave mode. And to put it in very, very simple terms, that means that you are very relaxed and it is one of the modes that our brain enters just before we go to sleep. Ultimately, you're relaxed. And when our brains are in this phase, our subconscious has a chance to process events, thoughts, emotions, and anything that may have been on your mind, helping to organize it in a, in a healthy way. Instead of operating and living your life with your brain being constantly active, whether you're watching TV, having conversations, scrolling through social media, when you take part in art therapy or crafting, you're giving your brain a chance to decompress. Then whenever you complete a piece of artwork, you also get a boost of dopamine, which is the happy hormone that gets released whenever we exercise. And my favorite art therapy tip, which I'm about to share with you, is something that I wish I knew as a teenager. It is a secretive journaling technique that I employ, which can then be used to create some beautiful artwork down the line. This is perfect if you live with your parents or you have a nosy sibling or you live with people that you think would betray your trust and read your journal. And if you learned cursive handwriting, if you know how to write in cursive, this should be quite easy for you to get started. All we are going to do is extend the loops, play with the spacing and size and really make the writing as scribbly as possible so it can't be read. I am not going to go through it because it really is that simple. Just as you write in cursive, just make the loops bigger, go letters one over the other, do words one over the other, extend the spacing, shorten the spacing, do lines upon lines over the top of one another so they can't be read. And I'm just going to show you an example of my scribbly journaling, which can't be read. I have no idea what this says. I remember writing it, but I don't know what it says and that's okay with me. I just had to get it out. 
And I would love to share this. This is a piece that we created in one of our free group sessions that occurs in the Craft Cafe Facebook group every Friday evening, UK time. And this bottom piece is Sharpie marker on vellum. It's a big chunky marker. So I did the secret of journaling technique and big chunky marker on vellum. So it's practically transparent. And then this is just using black ink pen on printer paper. And I was then able to just cut out pieces and use them with basic mark making techniques to create this beautiful piece. And I wanted to share another, this is a stamped piece of card that I have had for the longest time. And I just used gray marker to go over the top of it with the secret of journaling technique. And again, I have no idea what this is. <laughs> and you can also do it on pre-painted backgrounds. So a pre-painted background would just be this. So this is very lightly painted, but it's still painted. I used a pink water-based marker for these scribbly pieces in the background. The water-based marker means that I was able to then cover it with paint and then it would blend in to make it even more secretive and more difficult for people to read. I then did a simple mark making technique over the top and I added a flower that I had previously drawn on a piece of printer paper and cut out and it had been in my drawer for the longest time. So you can find whenever you do your secretive journaling technique, you can save the pieces in a pouch you can play with the paper that you use. You can do it on cards. You can do it on pre-painted paper. You could do it on fabric if you wanted to. You can cut the pieces out. You can turn those pieces into collage shapes. There are so many ways that this technique can be employed to not only be therapeutic and help you work out some seriously dark nonsense, but it can end up creating and going towards creating something very, very beautiful out of something that was so deeply painful in the past. And remember, if you are interested in learning more about art therapy and how it could help you to begin or continue the healing process, I really would love to get connected with you on that call. Visit clairedb.com forward slash art. Or if you would like to join us every Friday evening, you can get us in the Craft Cafe Facebook group linked below. You can then each week vote on the topic we're going to be covering on our Friday session and we have a great time in there. It's just me going live and connecting with you all via the comments box. And I really, I, I can't wait to get connected with you further to see how I can help. Thank you so much for watching.